Hi, my name is Rachel Fisher, and we are here live at Raleigh Studios in Hollywood, California, at the premiere of Motherland. Director, producer, and writer, Vic Gerani, he has been an incredible advocate, especially around this issue. Motherland is a film specifically about Azerbaijan's and Turkey's attacks and genocidal disasters against Armenians of Azerta. Vic himself is just a story close to his heart, as this is where he traveled back home to his own motherland to tell the story. Thank you so much for joining us on the red carpet tonight. We have council members, we have celebrities, we have the producer and editors themselves of the film. Stay tuned. We are here live with Vic Jeremy, the director, writer, and producer of the film. So tell me, Vic, how are you feeling tonight? I feel great. I'm actually very excited. I am. I've been looking forward to this for a year and eight months, and it's finally here. So I'm just really excited and happy for people to see it, see the final product. Definitely. We're all looking forward to it for sure. Now tell us, as an activist, a director, and somebody very passionate about speaking your truth, how did you choose to actually educate audiences through a film itself? Absolutely. Well, when, when the invasion of Artsakh happened in 2020, um, I watched in sort of in shock how the international community was just deafeningly silent about uh, this invasion, which was very similar to what happened in Ukraine. Mm -hmm. um, where 5,000 people were massacred in 44 days in the most brutal way. And the world media, for various reasons, uh, wasn't covering it, uh, mm -hmm. at least not accurately, the ones that were. So after uh, multiple different ways on my radio show, writing about it in different publications, uh, making a documentary film was the next indicated step, if you will, to... Uh, document the atrocities, the war crimes, the crimes uh, against humanity, and bring the story um, to worldwide audiences. That makes sense, definitely. And it's just a lot about you as a filmmaker yourself. Now, what was it like going back to shoot actually at your own motherland? Uh, it was um, it was bittersweet mm -hmm. because uh, you know I love I love going back to Armenia. It's such a beautiful, stunningly gorgeous. Um, historic uh, nation, but of course it was in the aftermath of uh, the, the most devastating thing that's happened to the Armenian people since the Armenian Genocide. So mm -hmm. uh, it was in that sort of a backdrop that uh, I had to make this film and interview a lot of refugees, veterans, journalists, eyewitnesses, people who'd lost their land, their homes, their loved ones. So it was bittersweet. Mm -hmm. And how did you approach or even go about interviewing refugees and people who have gone through such a traumatic incident? Well, um, I, I got lucky. I got connected with a lot of uh, people who, who knew of centers and agencies that were uh, helping these families uh, or sometimes individuals. Um, so, you know, I got connected with them. I asked their permission and went and um, at, you know, in some cases, I actually went to these organizations and set up with uh, my crew and interviewed people one by one. Um, and, uh, yeah, I got, I, I got to interview some really incredible people um, and also veterans, too. And how did you go about choosing your crew for the film itself? Well, <laughs> I don't know if we had a big crew. It was, it was basically a very, um, it was a passion project with very little budget. And uh, everyone that worked on it and has worked on it has been, um, has done it because they wanted to, to do it. My first call was uh, to my uh, longtime friend, Henrik Vartanian, who was a producer on the film. And uh, he'd actually never been to Armenia. And I said, we should go to Armenia and you should come with me. Um, he was a natural um, choice because he's, you know, he's been in the business for so many years, worked for British television and Canal Plus and, you know, has a very impressive resume. So uh, Henrik was a um, uh, was was a simple choice actually. And then um, we got lucky and got connected to Chris Damadian, our editor, who you know is just brilliant. Uh, we we really understood each other's language. We understood each other's vision, and uh, that was really important because he and I. I mean, I sat next to him as he edited the film for the most part. Um, so that was a great experience. Uh, everyone else was just as um, just as inspiring and just as uh, much of a team player. Hired some crews in Armenia when I went there because I went a few times and I couldn't take people from here. Mm. 
Um, and along the way, there's been many different people. But for the most part, it's the, the most pivotal people have been my producer, Henry Guartanian, and editor, Chris Damadian. Yeah. Glad you had a great crew with, behind you with this project. Um, and our last question today is, what do you wish audiences take away from a film such as this one, and what impact do you wish to leave on them? Um, I want them, first and foremost, to see what happened. How is it that in 2020, uh, nations of Azerbaijan and Turkey can orchestrate a, a genocidal assault and ethnic cleansing and massacre 5,000 Armenians in 44 days, and most of the world doesn't know about it. I want people to think about that because it's not just happening to Armenians of Artsakh. Uh, there are ongoing genocides now in Ethiopia, in uh, Yemen, and other parts of the world. But somehow, uh, due to geopolitics um, and uh, media's decision as to who they're going to cover, some are given due attention and some are not, unfortunately. And, uh, you know, just, just the takeaway would be that fighting for human rights and stopping crimes against humanity is going to be an ongoing thing. Mm -hmm. It's not just what happened then in the 20th century, whether it was the Armenian Genocide, the Holocaust, Rwanda, Chile, Cambodia, but it's going to continue to happen unless our leaders um, take action, and it's up to us to push our leaders to do that. Great answer. And that makes sense as well. And that's the filmmaker's job in the end of it. So thank you so much, Vic, for joining us today. And um, we're wishing the best of the premiere tonight. Thank you. Enjoy the film. And I am here with Jeff Prang. And he is here in support of this wonderful film. So tell us, Jeff, what is it in inspired you to come out here and support in this film? Well, the first thing is Vic, who is, uh, this is a project which has been a labor of love for his for a very long time. It is a passion of his. Mm -hmm. Um, I know him as a committed um, of community leader and activist who cares very deeply about the uh, about Armenia and the current events in in Armenia, and this is his way of uh, of expressing those uh, those those concerns and about uh, what's happening in uh, in in Armenia. I'm here to support him. I'm here to support uh, Armenia in its uh, in its uh, efforts in this during a very very difficult time. Um, so it's very ex very exciting for me, and I'm looking forward to the uh, to the seeing the film. Great. And let me ask you, what do you hope audiences take away from the piece such as this one? Um, I hope they have a better understanding of the struggle that the Armenian nation is uh, has been enduring, the uh, tax it's been under from from Turkey and Azerbaijan, and uh, and recognizing that there are literally. Ten, hundreds of thousands of Armenian Americans who care deeply about their uh, uh, ancestral homeland um, and want to ensure that that's protected, that's successful, and that the people there are safe. Well, great. Thank you so much, Jeff, and we appreciate your coming out for the film. My pleasure. Glad to be here. And we are here with publicist, writer, and founder of Cultura International PR, Nicole gossinger mouge Now, Nicole, thank you so much for coming in support of Motherland. Thank you. It's, I'm delighted to be here. I'm very proud of Nick. Vic. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so how do you know Vic and what is your relationship to him? Oh, um, Vic and I have worked together for quite a while. We actually did a PSA campaign um, for Armenian Artsakh last year and it um, had a lot of celebrities and we brought a lot of attention to the, the, the devastation in uh, Armenia and Artsakh. And so I'm so happy to see that his documentary is coming to fruition today and I'm proud of him for his premiere. Well, that is great. Thank you so much, Nicole, for coming in. And um, my last question for you is, what does it mean to you to support um, such a documentary as this one? Um, like I said, I'm, I'm very passionate about especially this cause and also about Ukraine and things like that. So anything to, you know, help fix the injustices in the world, I'm happy to support all the time. Well, great. Thank you so much, Nicole. Thank you. Thanks, Rachel. And we are here with producer of Motherland, Henrik Vartanian. Now, Henrik, how are you feeling tonight? Here's the big premiere. Good, uh, excited, a uh, little nervous, but, yeah, you know, I'm usually on the other side of the carpet. So, yeah, quite exciting. And what was the moment for you when you took on the project and knew this project was destined for you to be a part of? In many ways, it, it was the right project for me. Number one, uh, Vic, who's my friend, the filmmaker, uh, he invited me to join him on this project, and he said, hey, I need some... Uh, 
cameraman and a producer. <laughs> so if we went to Armenia, you know, can you please be my cameraman and come and shoot this thing? He said, well, yeah, I do have the equipment. So uh, definitely. And so he inv invited me to be on the project. And then for me, uh, being Armenian heritage, I was born in Iran, but my heritage is Armenian. I speak both languages, Farsi and Armenian. So it was just super exciting and interesting for me. We went right after the pandemic and the war was stopping and being negotiated. The peace was already negotiated. But to see my motherland where my heritage is from and then to visit it in this kind of situation was bittersweet. Mm -hmm. And how did you go approach actually shooting in Armenia during a time of crisis? It, it was a challenge because there were, you know, COVID was still happening. The war was just over, but it's not like they were not attacking uh, people in Artsakh or like, you know, not trying to, you know, get some killing done, uh, you know, bluntly said. Uh, but we tried to focus on people who lived it, who escaped. Uh, there were refugees that we, you know, interviewed. So we tried to cover it from different angles and as much as possible given the time and the situation we visited Armenia. Mm -hmm. And what is the most powerful message or takeaway that you've learned while actually shooting and being a part of such a film as this one? The most powerful message, the thing that I've learned is that we are all people, we're all connected and paying attention to these kind of atrocities and injustice is super important no matter who you are. And by visiting that kind of ingrained me in a little more, I should say. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes, that's very powerful indeed. And let me ask you, what do you hope audiences take away and what are their next action steps after they watch the film? What they should take away is to get involved, mm -hmm. if not for Armenia, for similar things that are happening right now in the world and uh, become a part of the solution and help in any which way they can and also educate themselves. Well, great. Thank you so much, Henrik, and looking forward to the premiere. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Good. Okay. And we are here with the editor of Motherland, Chris Damijan. So, Chris, tell us, how was it being a part of such a project? Um, I mean, it was difficult, to be honest, just because of the subject matter. And being Armenian myself, it was very close to our hearts. Um, so it was tough. It was, you know, it was probably the most difficult project I've ever had to edit just because of like sitting behind the computer and watching images of your own people being slaughtered um, day in and day out. So it was definitely tough but it was also um, very important and there was a sense of you know um, we're doing something to help and to hopefully spread some awareness. So it was, uh, it was difficult but rewarding. Mm -hmm. And what was it like selecting the footage that audiences would see for film this, this one? Um, a lot of that was just stuff that, um, you know, was circulating uh, on, on um, the news and, uh, of course, not like international news, but more Armenian news because um, it wasn't being covered much by the media elsewhere. Um, but we all, Vic, me, Henrik, we all kind of were very familiar with what was going on. So there was stuff that, like, we kind of knew going in that we definitely need to show this to people and get people to see this, get it in front of as many eyes as possible. So a lot of it was, like, just stuff we had already kind of, um, we knew we were going to use. Mm -hmm. And how was it working with Vic and Henrik together as one team? It was amazing. I mean, Vic... Um, from the beginning, I feel like he knew what he wanted. He had it kind of um, like he knew how he wanted to tell the story and what um, elements he wanted to include. Uh, so it was very easy. It was it was like, you know, the for an editor, the number one thing is working with the director who knows what they want and then showing them other options, of course, but kind of um, starting from a place where you have someone who knows what they're trying to tell and what story they're trying to tell. So it was amazing. Well, that's great. And how are you filming the premieres tonight? Anything else you want audiences to take away from you or your role in the film? Um, just hopefully to spread awareness about, you know, what's going on not only in Armenia, but throughout the world in Ukraine. And um, we see it, you know, so often where um, there are just atrocities that 
that are carried out and we all want to do something and make a change. Um, so hopefully, you know, we can uh, do a small part for that change with the premiere and the film. Well, thank you, Chris, and thank you for your work, and we're looking forward to seeing the premiere. Thank you. Thank you. Of course, awesome. Awesome. And we are here live with Alex Mohajer, the president of the Stonewall Democrats. So tell us, Alex, what does it mean to you to support and come out to see a film such as this one? Well, first, I wanted to support LGBTQ filmmakers who are shining a light on human rights abuses that are happening around the world. I think that's really important and something I wanted to do. I wanted to support Vic Jarami, the, uh, the creator of the film, and uh, also give my support to a really important cause. Because as we know, these human rights abuses are happening around the world, but particularly in this situation, something we're not hearing about. And LGBTQ communities are parts of the uh, adversely affected groups in these countries that are, that are killed. And so I wanted to come support the community. That's great. Thank you so much for being here. And let me ask you, so what do you hope audiences take away from a film such as this one? I'm hoping to learn just with the rest of the audience about what's happening, the details of what's happening, and, and take that back at home and into our own respective communities so that we can share this information and learn about it. That's why I think movies like this are so important, um, because they're shining a light on something that the, the mainstream media is not shining a light on, and it's a story that needs to be told. So I'm hoping that that's what we take away from it collectively as an audience, not just today, but anyone who, who sees the film. Well, great. Thank you so much, Alex. Pleasure meeting you. Yeah, pleasure to meet you. And we are here live with Oshin Haratunian. So, Oshin, tell us, what does it mean to you to support a film like Motherland? Well, it means a lot to me. Uh, I think it was about time to make a documentary uh, and um, show the entire world about all the atrocities of, uh, committed by Aliyev and Azerbaijan. Uh, I think that uh, when this happened, the world was kind of complacent. Nobody knew what was going on, or they didn't want to know what was going on. Um, and this complacency uh, resulted in the war in Ukraine. So um, I'm very glad that uh, uh, Vic contacted me. I, this is actually the first day I met Vic personally. He just emailed me a clip of what he was working on. I was very impressed. And I'm very glad that um, uh, this, the, this, this, has, this is going to be presented to the entire world. I'm, uh, it's really important to see that uh, the superpowers cannot be complacent about what's going on. And uh, this would actually uh, will prevent any other action that's going to happen by Russia or China suppressing uh, smaller nations. That's all. That's all I think. That's great. Awesome. Thank you so much for coming out to support, and we really appreciate you being here. Thank you. Thank you. And we are here live with John Denham. So tell us, John, what does it mean to you to support a film like Motherland? We, as a non-Armenian, but as someone who teaches social psychology and extremism, um, it just felt really important at this moment. Like, oftentimes we look at things in a historical perspective, but this is in the moment, and accountability is really important right now. And the, the, the world was silent when this happened, and I wanted to bring a voice to those who are silent. As a queer Jewish man, I know what it means to be marginalized, and I wanted some, in some way to contribute. I was blessed through the pandemic to be able to continue to work as an as a instructor at a university, and so I was able to give Vic some money to help get this started. Well, that's great. We appreciate your support. Now, can I ask you, why do you feel like audiences were silent at a time in the world like this? I, I think it's because indigeneity is, is not an important focus. Like, it's always been suppressed. Even the United States as colonizers, Europe as colonizers. Like, the idea of indigeneity has always been the last focus when it's the first people to be, to be oppressed, to be genocidally attacked. Um, and, and I, again, wanted to bring voice to that. I work in Native communities. I work within Native American communities here in the United States. I work with them. Um, and it's important for that voice to be heard as well. Definitely, for sure. And what do you feel like audiences may take away from a film like Motherland? And what do you hope they do? I hope they take away the, the accountability that needs to be put at the feet of Aliyev the Turkish government and the Russian government because Turkey backed them and Russia provided the military um, armaments 
for them to continue. Also, Syria had sent over people as mercenaries. I mean, accountability needs to be laid at the feet of those who are accountable. And this documentary, I've seen a rough cut of it, does that. And Vic fact-checked, fact-checked. So everything in this documentary is real. It's true. And when people see it, I hope they, they understand and have compassion for the people of Artsakh and Armenia as a whole. Well, that's great. Thank you so much, John, for your support of the film and for being a part of something wonderful. Thank you very much. Okay. And I am here live with Congresswoman Judy Chu, 27th District of California. Now, Judy, what does it mean to you to support a film like Motherland? It is so wonderful to be able to have this documentary. I did go to Artsakh. I was able to witness how what a beautiful and charming place it is. and when I heard about the attack by Azerbaijan, I was just horrified to hear about the many thousands that died, the refugees that were created that are cannot go back home, and the prisoners of war that are still there. So we are doing what we can in Congress, but what is really disturbing is that the world doesn't know enough about this. That's what this documentary can do. It can provide a light on what's going on in Artsakh. That is very true. And as an advocate yourself, what do you think audiences can do after they watch a film like Motherland? Well, certainly we can advocate to make sure that there are no military weapons that the U.S. provides for Azerbaijan. That's what we're doing in Congress. And we're also demanding that uh, the prisoners of war and civilians that are detained by Azerbaijan be returned home. And we're also demanding that uh, F-16s are not sold to Turkey because of their complicity in what happened in Artsakh. Well, thank you so much, and thank you for all that you do, and we really appreciate you being here to show your support. Thank you so much. Um, and we are here with Eric Strong, LA Sheriff County candidate. So, Eric, tell us, what does it mean for you to support a film such as Motherland? Oh, I'm excited about it. I mean, I know Vic's put a lot of work into this, uh, and it's very deep and rich in, in, in culture and history, so I'm here to support anything that he has going on, and I'm just happy to be here. That's great. And how do you know Vic personally? Uh, I had a chance to meet Vic on the campaign trail uh, very early on in my campaign. I had an opportunity to talk to him and get on his radio show, and we just kind of connected and, and uh, had several conversations and kept the relationship building, and so I'm uh, uh, proud to support him. That's great. Thank you so much for being here. And we are here with Councilmember Mitch O'Farrell. So Mitch, tell us, what does it mean to you to come out and support Vic and Motherland? Uh, it's it's a, a, a really momentous occasion. I mean, Vic has been working on this film for years. I've seen some of the early footage. Very impressive. So I've been looking forward to this day. And my office helped uh, this film along through some financing. And this location we helped with because it's in the 13th district, which I represent. So I'm very happy uh, and proud to support my good friend, Vic Jarami. Well, that is great. We really appreciate your support as well. And how did you know when Vic came to you that this was something you wanted to take on? All he had to say was, I'm doing this film. I've traveled to Armenia a number of times. Uh, and I, I know him. I know that he produces quality content. Everything he does is quality. So I knew that I needed to get in support and, and back him in this effort. So I cannot wait to see this film. It's great. We appreciate you being here. My pleasure. Great to be here. And we are here with Sean Sakin. So tell us, what does it mean to you, Sean, to support Motherland and Vic and his project? Well, I think uh, the tragedy that took place in Artsakh and what happened to the Armenian people, not only uh, current times, but how it relates to our past. It's really important that the story is told, uh, not only for the Armenian community, but for the entire world community. Uh, and it's really important that the uh, lives that were lost, uh, we know why they were lost with the tragic attacks, unprovoked attacks that took place. Um, but also for the world to know uh, that those that aided in, in this uh, crime against humanity, um, but also for the world to know the perseverance of the Armenian people uh, and the people of Artsakh. Uh, and I think it's important for all of us to support uh, the storytellers uh, and Vic and the team that has put this documentary together that is going to help tell that story. Mm -hmm. And does the film mean anything personal to you as well? Well, I think the, it relates to my heritage as, as an Armenian American, um, both uh, growing up in, in uh, the great country that we live in in America, um, but also our, our important role on the global stage uh, and for us to speak out against prejudice of all kinds, not only here at home, but also uh, in Armenia and Artsakh and all around the world. That's great. And let me ask you, what do you want audiences to take away and know more about Armenia itself and what is going on? 
Uh, well, I think it's important for them to know what's happening today, um, and not only the destruction of human life, but also the cultural destruction that is taking place in Artsakh uh, as we stand here today. Uh, and so it's really important for uh, the audience to be aware of what's going on around the world and find a way to contribute uh, to the cause uh, in any way that they can. Well, that's great. Thank you so much for being here, and thank you so much for your support. Thank you. And we are here with Kat Kramer, actress and founder of Kat Kramer's Films That Changed the World. Kat, how does it feel to be here as an advocate and supporter of the film Motherland? I'm really looking forward to seeing Motherland. I've only seen the trailer and read a little bit about it, but um, I'm excited to see it. And it's great to be back at Raleigh at the um, Charlie Chaplin Theater. Uh, I actually plan to have some screenings for Kat Kramer's films that change the world here in the future. And uh, my dad had offices here back before I was born when he was making On the Beach, kind of um, another very important film that's unfortunately very relevant today and timely. But let's hope that's not the case. But um, I'm definitely looking forward and proud of Vic for I think this is his first film. And so, um, you know, I know there's a lot to... Uh, take in and it's going to be very informative. Indeed. And so what are some of the current projects that you're working on with your own entertainment company? Oh, there's so many. I have like 10 projects I'm working on to produce for some of the animation space and features and for streaming and uh, television and um, I just started Cat Kramer Comedy launching that stand-up comedy which I'm now developing into my new solo show. Uh, I did a, um, a short feature I acted in for Michelle Arthur during just a couple months ago. And like during the pandemic, I just developed a lot of a, a new content and um, tried to take things into the virtual space and did a lot of, you know, Zoom and webinars and um, even sang live a couple of months ago. So I've tried to make it work, but it's, it is better to be live or in person, so to speak, as opposed to always being um, on Zoom or in the virtual space. I mean, I, there's a lot more people you can reach, but I prefer having like a hybrid experience. So I've tried to make it work during the pandemic, and um, the bravest thing I did was doing stand-up in the height of it when the clubs were definitely not vigilant about masks or, you know, anything like that. So I tried to work that into my routine. What a great way to do that as well. And where can audiences find you and your future endeavors? Well, I have two websites, uh, KatherineKramer.com and Cat Kramer's Films That Change the World.com. And then I have uh, several Facebook pages, and Twitter is at Catherine Kramer, getting a new Instagram, um, and just my um, Facebook page, the Catherine Kramer Fan Club Group, or uh, Catherine Kramer. It's actually Catherine Cat Kramer. But I think the websites is probably the best place to check up on content and some of the things I'm working on. Well, great. And thank you so much for being here. Oh, absolutely. And pleasure meeting you as well. Yeah, nice meeting you too.